Welcome to Die Mad About It. It's a show where we tell Doug to fuck off and he, well, dies mad about it. We're your hosts, Brooke, a.k.a. The Truthful G, and I'm with... Amy, the president of We Mad. And today we have a special guest, Victoria859 from TikTok. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, Vicki? Hey, everybody. My name is Victoria C 859 on TikTok. You can also find me on Instagram as the same way. I am um, a Micmac enrolled tribal member um, that is based out of Maine. And basically my page is about native issues and raising awareness. I fully recommend everybody to go watch her content. It's really good shit and highly undervalued. I don't know why you're not at like a million followers because it's really- <laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> One day it's coming. But no, before we started recording, we were talking about um, how this time of year, it, it comes about the indigenous day and then Halloween and then Thanksgiving, just bam, bam, bam. And I was talking about how um, my daughter's father he didn't pay his child support this month and my daughter is old enough to make her own decisions. And so she independently made the decision to text his mother and say, where's my money? And I thought that was appropriate because it is her money. <laughs> and, uh, her nice. grandmother said it's held up because of uh, Columbus Day. And my daughter said, do you mean Native American Day? <laughs> there you go. As there she should. Go. So tell us how you feel about that. Um, so, you know, it's so funny because, you know, it's still considered a federal holiday, uh, you know, so as far as like banks and post offices and, you know, federal buildings, you know, they are closed. However, you see this kind of like slow movement across, you know, across the United States where you're seeing different states. Um, personally, my state that I live in, um, it's on the calendar. Uh, nobody goes to school, but the state offices and everything are still open. So. Um, is still considered, you know, Columbus Day. Um, you know, there is a Indigenous Peoples Day parade, you know, kind of thing. And there's some, you know, festivities going on, but. Um, it shocks me that it's not all 50 states because in South Dakota, that has been a thing for very many years. And I don't know about in North Carolina, Amy, do you? Yeah, so in North Carolina, my kids were in school. It was not celebrated um, as any holiday whatsoever a shame it's just um you know I, I really still don't understand why it was even a thing um you know and why there's a statue of him in central park and you know like all of all of that um and and you just have to really you know if people really want to understand the history you know his journals are out there you can get them on amazon for 10 bucks you know if anybody really wants to read um you know the atrocities and everything you know it's all about you know educating yourself um, but it, it's this whole cycle and it's, and it's a yearly thing, you know, like, like you're saying, you know, we have to go into indigenous people's day and we have to talk about, you know, Christopher Columbus, you know, and then we go right into <laughs> Halloween, you know, our culture mm-hmm. is in a costume and you'll see all of those, you know, videos on social media, ranting around, you, you see the party city, you know, shit. You know, you see the, the Walmart, and, you know, I think, you know, you can go over to, you know, the Halloween Express and, and we're on 25% off on clearance, you know, so it's, um, and then awesome. you get done with that. And then we go right into Thanksgiving or what, you know, American history is believed what Thanksgiving is. And so it's like, it's a whole six week period of education calling out making fun of you know our culture isn't and it's so exhausting yeah, and we have to do this every year yeah Vicky, people are Vicky, I'm curious. absolutely and I just just to pipe in and not to interrupt you at all I, I'm curious if you could explain to our listeners as though they're kindergartners in case that one white man ends up listening to <laughs> as to why it is so offensive to dress up like this for Halloween Um, so, uh, you know, and and I think this kind of came about, you know, there was a, there was a viral video that went out, you know, about, oh, you know, the audacity of people dressing up as people from the nineties, you know, with the Walkman and the, you know, the lace gloves and the Madonna and the neon (laughs) and all that, you know, and I remember, um, when it was cool to dress up as a 1920s flapper, 
yep. you know, or a 1950s, you know, bebop poodle skirt, you know, I when you're born both of those. Yeah. Right. So why wouldn't, you know, people that are younger than this, you know, I'm 51. So why wouldn't people younger than us dress up as quote, you know, their parents, you know, like mm-hmm. I dressed up as my grandparents in the roaring twenties, you know, or, yeah. or the fifties, it's just uh, progression. But what we have to realize is that this is an, a, an era, you know, it is an era. It is not a culture. Yep. It is, it, it's an era of time. It is not a culture. And yes, the roaring twenties was a thing more than likely those people are no longer with us mm-hmm. more than likely, mm-hmm. you know, they are, you know, have passed on, um, their native people are still here. We're underrepresented. We're underheard. We're not amplified. You know, nobody's talking about our issues, but we are still here. Um, our regalia is, is, uh, a way it wasn't until 1978 that we actually had to have the freedom of religion act passed for us. We were not allowed to practice our own religion and have our sacred ceremonies and all of that openly and freely without fear of being arrested, shot, unalived, um, you know, so meanwhile, everybody is running to mass and everybody's running to church and getting baptized and bap, you know, Sunday school and, you know, the, the choir practices and all of that. And, and we have to be quiet. Um, you know, we can't, we can't do that. So that is why it, it's just a, it's a respect thing. Um, I think you you're have a whole like appropriation versus appreciation mm. sort of. Maybe that's I, not I, the right way to put it, the right context. That, yeah, that please. like that's not it. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. That, like it, it's I appreciate not, it. you know, like if I, if you go to a powwow or you go to, you know, a festival, um, I know where you live, you, you've been to many of them, you know, yeah. and you swing by a vendor's booth and you buy a pair of beaded earrings and you wear them, that is appreciation. You know, yeah. appropriation is, you know, you want to go and grab a party city, you know, regalia and some chicken feathers for a headdress, put it on and wave around some white sage and post it up on your, you know, on your social media thinking that that's okay you know and it's really making a mockery of of the of you know native culture native people we're still here um you know and we had to fight for our right to be able to do all of that stuff so that it's it's just you get into the next aspect and and you know me so um you know I'm going to talk about MMIW um missing murdered indigenous women And so when you have people that are not native that are going to throw on these, quote, Pocahontas costumes, because that's usually the go to. Right. It's that Disney thing Um, and dress up in the little turquoise choker and the little armband and, you know, a little face paint. And, oh, don't I look so cute? Um, It throws out that fetishization of of women. It throws out that, quote, sexy Pocahontas. Um, it throws out that um, it's exotic and unique, and where indigenous women in danger. Yeah, and can we talk about how that's not how Pocahontas the story went whatsoever? Also, she didn't marry John Smith. That's not how any of that went. Like, yeah, like they. it's like <laughs> Vicky's talked about the story on her TikTok many a times. I've... I mean, it's just I, and I don't know, you know critical race theory is so needed and I'm a big, you know, I'm a big advocate for teaching critical race theory. Um, and people have like this really weird thing about critical race theory, but it's just really teaching the true history and things that can be read through journals, like handwritten journals that these people wrote them. Actual proof. Yep. Actual proof. Historic. it, 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 it's the Disney thing. It's the sexy Pocahontas thing. And then the next thing, you know, you have, what was it? 54 people went missing back in May in South Dakota. Oh my God. I mean, I'm telling you, we had it it, all in one month. It was like, and they were children and it wasn't talked about on the news. And, you know, we talk about the costume thing. And I was thinking about this before we got on here. Like it makes me really, uh, 
really have to come to terms with who I was as a person because I think I've explained before I used to be a Republican I used to be conservative there was a time when I thought this type of behavior was just fine to wear a costume like that and not at all harmful and now it just disgusts me because what's happening is children don't learn and they grow up in a society that sees Native American people as less than and it makes me so grateful that at least in my daughter's school they are incorporating Lakota language and Lakota history and things like that but that's really where it starts Otherwise you get just this conglomeration of ignorance and just repeated generational trauma, I think is what you're describing. And it's a lot, yeah. I can't imagine. I literally well, will never be able to imagine. And it's like the, we go from, you know, you go from, you know, indigenous people's day, Col Columbus day, Halloween, um, native American month, uh, but then you have to deal with Thanksgiving. It's a national day of mourning for us. And, you know, you get the people, oh, I don't celebrate it, but you have family over. It's the same thing. You know, I don't, whatever, just because you don't call it Thanksgiving, you know? Yeah. Um, and then you go right into, um, you know, the beginning of the year, Christmas and all of that. But then what happens, you have spring break and you have Sturgis and Sturgis oh, is God. one of the largest known sex trafficking rings in the country. It is. It's absolute human trafficking. It's absolute human trafficking every year, every year. They even have to give self-defense courses because of that. And uh, Amy, for you, I don't know if you're familiar with Sturgis, but it's this big biker rally that we have for literally no reason, just like white trash to come together. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, what do, what on Thanksgiving, what do, I, I've actually, I've asked people before, but what is your take? Like, what do you, what do you do? on that day do you guys gather to remember the things that are lost or is nothing done or what um there is a it's called the national day of mourning uh you can find it on youtube um they actually do the walk at plymouth rock mm. wow. um and they do the reading and they do all of that and there is you know anyone can go it's at, it's at, it's actually at Plymouth Rock and they walk, you know, from in town all the way to Plymouth Rock. Um, you know, you'll have native activists there. You'll have people from around that area, you know, go, um, they always do it. They always broadcast it live. Um, oh. I actually really want to go, go there, you know, and do the walk one day. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, and usually I just watch the Cowboys play at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for you you know yeah. it is a day of football that's the truth but uh amy did you have any like questions or anything that you wanted to like add into that no i mean i'm just here to listen to the expert um you, you know just to kind of get a glimpse into th that th the actual angle from an indigenous native american person who is trying to get the word out and educate others. You know, you don't see, and if you do, it's called out as a horrific event. If somebody dresses up and dresses up in blackface, you, you don't see it anymore. If that happens, they're called out, they're blasted. So why is it not similar in terms of disrespect to dress up um, and any sort of Native American, you know, glorification of, um, you know, this like kink factor. It, it's like, you know, it's all too much. I'm hundred percent, in support of cutting all of that out, stop, um, you know, the, uh, it's in the MMIW. I mean, I, hopefully you do have a chance to touch on that a little bit more too. I, I, that's the awareness of that is, is so important. And Brooke, you were talking about that, a large biker event. I mean, those types of events happen everywhere. Uh, and it is typically, I mean, it's children, it's trafficking. These are things that are not talked about enough, but they're in our face where there's awareness that it's happening and it's shut down um, consistently. So I really think that you, one, you take away its power when you talk about it openly and you state it for what it is, as opposed to hiding it. You know, indigenous people have had to hide who they are for so long. The fact that I love when I come through native native TikTok, Native American TikTok, and it's just one after another, educating, educating, educating. And, and the more I learn, the, the happier I am. So I love the fact that I'm seeing that and the face of you know this amazing rich culture that has just been really shoved is. down by 
white masses for so long. So I, I'm loving it. And I'm so glad that we got an opportunity to sit here with you today. You know, yeah. if people, I think a lot of it, number one, um, how long has it been since the, um, you know, going back to a little bit of the football thing, right? How long has it been since the Washington Redskins changed their name? Right. Not, it was recently. <laughs> That's how normal yeah, that is literally how normal it is in the society of the United States of America. Yeah, there so are still schools, which we are fighting. One of my friends just went to a board meeting to try to get the high school mascot removed and changed. And you have the majoress, you have the marching bands, you have the cheerleaders, you have all of these people you know, buying this shit off Amazon from these companies that are overseas. So we have literally no control right. over trying to bo boycott those companies that sell those ridiculous fake headdresses um, because they're, there's a, they're, there's a market for it and mm -hmm. they're getting rich off of that appropriation. So, you know, you, until you have people actively showing up at school board meetings, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'll put the call to action out there. You know, if, if there's, if there's a school within your district or within where you live that has any type of, you know, native name, you know, Indians, you know, whatever, write a letter, send an email call the school, get some of your people together and say, Hey, let's, let's go to this. You know, we're doing it. We're just yeah. not getting the support right. from other people because they want to keep the name the same. And, Oh, you know, this is just how it's always been. And it doesn't really affect me as a white person. Right. So, right. They right. don't want to not fit in with their other white people. Right. And be inconvenient. But right. if you see something, you really should say something where it calls for it. You shouldn't just be like, if like, you shouldn't just be inserting yourself into like every issue where you weren't asked necessarily. We get into like virtue signaling and stuff like that. But yes, writing a letter and going to board meetings, uh, school board meetings, I think is absolutely you know, I mean, what would you say is the appropriate situation for like, if there is a white person out there listening that wants to take some initiative? Is that where that starts, Vicki? I think really, uh, you know, depending on where you live, right? Depending on where you live, you may have some native representation there that you may or may not know about, right? Um, if there's a, any type of a chapter or an association or whatever, reach out to them, see if they've done anything about it, if they haven't gotten anywhere, then, you know, maybe revisit that with them again, you know, there's all kinds of resource centers and, you know, all of that, you know, kind of all the way across the country and each state is different and, you know, all of that. Um, but like, basically Google is free and people should educate themselves. Basic, like, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> are you really okay with, you know, Smithville Indian you know, Indians as being your representing your hometown, like, are you okay with that? I gotta and, say, and too, and and I'm still in shock by your 1978 number of religious freedom. When we just saw recently, you know, your typical white middle class coach kneel on a football field on the 50 yard line in front of everyone, which is silent pressure to students to uh, be a part of this Christian prayer it's constantly in our faces and yet you just had to battle to have any sort of religious freedom without persecution i mm -hmm. it's like my mind is like blown I, it's literally two years before i was born i mean it's like I was seven. not long ago not long ago yeah yeah so i was I seven know. That's reminiscent you know, of like residential schooling and rebranding of like people's mindset and things like that. And like what you were talking about, Vicky, about how like, you know, taking like you couldn't even worship your own religion, you know? Yeah. The last residential school in the United States closed in 1996. They're how old were you in 1996? They're still fine. Two time. years away from graduating. Yeah. I mean, I mean, literally 1996. So yeah. And there has only been a handful 
of schools that have been searched to this day. Now, I think we're, you know, around 11,000 that have been found. Um, you know, university, um, I just did a, I did a video not that long ago where, um, you know, there's two universities holding on to native remains for archaeology and anthropology. Like they're holding our ancestors and our remains like in these museums and, you know, like it's, it's the whole entire, I, I, it's so gross. It's just so, <laughs> it's so I, I, gross I, and barbaric. It really is. Like there, there will come a time when we will look back on things. There will come a time and we may be long for it, but there will come a time where we'll look back on stuff like this and be like, what were we doing? Because, you know, America really is just this little baby country. Like there are other countries that are far exceed our intellect. And uh, that's awful. It's just like I mean, it, the it, horror just comes and comes and comes when it comes to uh, the atrocities against Native American Indigenous people. It's, um, I'm so sorry. Uh, we still don't have a system, um, you know, and, and um, I'm, I'll go ahead and, and, and swing this into, you know, MMIW. Um, the state of Washington is the very first state to put out an alert system statewide. Um, you know, for any, uh, any indigenous person who um, has been declared missing. Now with that, there's a lot of criteria and stuff, you know, um, there was a four-year-old, uh, four-year-old child that um, all of a sudden just went missing from a park. Poof, thin air, nobody knows, didn't qualify for the Amber Alert, don't know why. Didn't um, qualify, still, didn't qualify. Still, there's a four-year-old. Still missing, still missing, oh have not, God. haven't been, has not been located, um, you know, and uh, everyone thinks that, you know, that the protocol of what happens when someone goes missing, right, um, you know, you, you call your police and you say, hey, this person is missing, um, we don't get that. We don't get that, you know, it's, oh, how long have they been missing? Are you sure they're not at a friend's house? Were they out partying? Are they, you know, laying out drugs seriously. somewhere? Not taken seriously, come back. Um, you know, they don't get reported. Once they do get reported, they may not necessarily get put in the NEMAC, um, you know, NCMEC, you know, website. Um, they may not, if they're a missing child, they may not get put on the missingkids.org site. And somehow they're on the, I mean, I don't, I couldn't tell you how many videos I've done. You go to like the South Dakota or the Montana site, you'll see these, these kids listed. And I'm talking minors under the age of 18 yeah. that they're on the state website, but they're not on the national website. So they don't have a milk carton. They don't have a missingkids.org, you know, so we're so severely under reported that nobody can really even get accurate numbers of how, why, where, who, who's taking us, trafficking, where are we being trafficked to? And it's always, if it's a juvenile, they're considered a runaway. Right, right. And, and that's where it's, you know, it, it's, it's just the whole goddamn system. Like it's just- The system it's, is truly, is truly failing uh, the Native American people. These are facts. It, I mean, it is, you know, and, and, and meanwhile, you have the Navajo reservation still doesn't have clean, they don't even have running water still, you know, uh, you can't, they can't get to the polls because of the voter suppression. Yeah, you know? that one makes me so freaking angry because it's so, it's like what Stacey Abrams went through, you know, in the impoverished areas and the voters, you know, like, you know, they can't get to voting booths and you are purposely making it. So, you know, they know what they're doing. It's just so calculated. And they also know that indigenous people vote blue you know if you know assuming they can get to a voting booth they would vote blue and that's why it's so heinous and so egregious and really makes me upset just the conditions out on the reservations well and it's so blatant and i mean you mentioned holding on to remains and it's like you're a, a people that are still here like, this is not from way in the past like literally you're living and surviving here but it's like there's this invisible wall that they want created around the reservation so that you know not only can no one be aware of the disservice and and the, the blatant disregard for your your culture the society in itself the fact that you're you know don't have running water these types of things are basic human 
needs right that should right. be under the constitution for all human beings even though the constitution is complete bullshit um you know this is like basic human needs so it's just absurd to me that it's so blatant and it's so obvious what what's been happening for so long and so many just sit by and well you know i mean that's that's them it's like no oh. you're like living breathing people like you exist right here in front of us it's like, right Oh, but, but look, like, I know. this costume on sale for $14.99. Right, Let's right. grab that because that's accurate representation. The like, fact that they, like, it's insulting enough that it's a costume for sale and then to have them right. on clearance is like, I definitely, um, I mean, I see why there is anger there and it's definitely not appropriate. And uh, and I don't mean for you to be preaching, for us to be preaching to the choir with you, Vicki, and I don't mean for you to have to educate us, but I I do know that your following is devoted to MMIW and things like that. So, I mean, um, any way we can help, we really would like to. And I appreciate that. I think it's just really, you know, um, just constantly being in, being in people's face, you know, Hey, did you know about this? Hey, did you know about that? Oh, Hey, you know, ICWA is being heard before the Supreme court next month. You know, that's, that's huge. You know, um, that's a call to action. You know, you, you literally have, we literally have a federal law stating that native children cannot be removed and cannot be placed with non-native families were protected under that law. And now this is being called into question. And I remember seeing your video, you know, and you're like, there's no way there's no way. If there's not, no way this, they're going to allow this to happen again, because no it's literally. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, uh, Eric and I broke up, but we're still friends and you know, he's Hispanic and he was telling me all you white people, all you worry about each other. He's like, you need to be worrying about the people that you're fucking over. Like, because once they try to do that, they already take the children and put them into the foster care system. And we talk about residential schools and stuff like that. Like, there is no way the Native people would ever allow that again. It's such a deep scar. Nor should they. Nor should they. And it's crazy yeah. to me that the Supreme Court would even entertain the idea. So, I mean, that's just what I hear from the people here who talk to me yeah. about it. Like, we would never. I, it could not be. It can't happen. Like, it... it, it it just can't happen. Um, you know, my grandchild's currently protected under ICWA, you know, it just, it, it goes running, you know, it, it runs so deep, you know, yeah. it, it, it's just one of those things. And for the fact that we even have to have a, a, a law to protect our children is insane to me, you know, it's insane. And the fact that it's being called into question and being heard before the Supreme court next month, what November 8th or 9th, is even more crazy to me that you know make the right and of decision. course they're gonna do it you know two weeks before thanksgiving break right and this is what people don't understand either is that it's all about a domino effect it's about tipping that one domino and once they get that one domino there goes the rest of the rights and protections yep yeah, yeah. exactly Our so basically way. don't buy any native costumes if you see them you know no, I'm gonna dress up. I think I'm gonna go as Marjorie Taylor Green myself. I don't yeah, know. Like, that's terrifying. <laughs> and I will go as Christy Nome. Uh, and, Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll hear just, everybody. It'll be great. No, key takeaways from this episode are, you know, don't be a dumbass. Uh, native culture is not a costume. Probably don't say happy Thanksgiving to a native person. I had to have that discussion uh, with some children recently. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I never thought of it like that. I'm like, yes, that's because you grew up in the American educational system. So mm. Um, yeah. And they don't know any better. Like they don't know any better because they were literally raised with, you know, how many times during your elementary school years, did you have the little headband, you know, with the turkey feathers, you know, with the, with the five, with your five fingers. I mean, every year. like every year when I was a kid, we did that. And I, and, and you know, the sad thing is there were, I mean, it's sad in general, but like there were Native American children in the classroom and no one ever thought to like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Right. <laughs> like, Again, to your key point number one, don't be a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> don't be a dumbass. <laughs> but if, uh, if I see you out on, on Halloween night wearing this, like I'm, I'm probably like going to lose it. You know? 
talk shit, get hit type of situation. <laughs> like, <laughs> gotta lose it. If I see you at a party, party. <laughs> but uh, no, we'll wrap it up because I know you got things to do, Vicky. I really do uh, appreciate your time coming on today and uh, sharing, you know, uh, the the struggle that you go through. I know that it's probably exhausting to talk about this over and over and over again. I know that it is exhausting. So um, I really do want to thank you for your time. As and- many times as it takes. As yeah. many times as it takes, like, yeah. you know, we repeat and repeat and repeat, but as many times as it takes. And for... you are, you are making a difference. I mean, I know it is, it is exhausting. There must be times when you get tired, but I know every once in a while, someone will remind me that I'm making a difference and it makes it all worth it. And I just want to say genuinely, you are making a difference. Please keep speaking. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank Much you for respect. having me as a guest. Yes. And where can they find you again? If people are looking for your following and anything, is there any place they can donate to for MMIW? What, what would you like? Um, Yeah, there is, um, there is MMIWUSA.org. That is the uh, uh, foundation. Um, There's also a really cool nonprofit that I found. It's called the Red Blanket Fund. Hmm. And what they do is they give $1,000 grants to uh, the families of those who go missing to be able to print uh, flyers, uh, searches, um, you know, if there's dog searches or drones, even, you know, if need be funeral expenses, um, you know, so like that, that kind of thing, um, you know, and they have like an application for grants and all of that. So, um, you know, the more money they raise, the more people they can help, you know, that way. Um, So those are mainly the two that, you know, I kind of really try to plug yeah, that's amazing. That's am- I'm going to go check them out and I'm going to go donate as a thank you for your time today. Um, um, all right. So you guys heard it here and you can follow uh, Vicky on TikTok, Victoria859, I believe. Victoria C859 on TikTok and on Instagram. Very good. Uh, join us next week when we'll discuss the terrors of the patriarchy and some horror stories on narcissism and divorce. Uh, Amy, where can they find you? You can find me everywhere, dragonflies and whiskey. And I'm the truthful G. Uh, Thanks for listening. And remember, Doug, women don't owe you shit.